everyone. It is This Is Whole Life. And it is a special Saturday edition, although you wouldn't know that just by the fact. <laughs> Why are you telling them, Randy? <laughs> yeah, because, well, because like I feel like. see the magic behind how it all works. How I it mean, all works. I feel like it's going to get, uh, don't I feel like we're going to feel, it's going to, it feels different. I feel like they're going to know it's different and they're going to think like, hey, was something going on on Tuesday that's not normally happening? Are they, were they everything fine? Like they're going to know. Well, this will explain why if you submitted a question on Monday night. <laughs> that, that's the other one. Yeah. It is not happening. But, I, you know, this is the other part. I, I, you know, maybe we should, I mean, be burying false witness. But if we told everyone we were taping every Saturday afternoon right after church. I mean, I did get an email from this morning. Yeah. Like from, and so, which doesn't usually happen like right Oh, after cool. so we'll go through that in just a moment of course it's melanie it's ken it's randy i'm it's, melanie i'm ken you're Mel- oh man oh, that, <laughs> uh, that voice just was, in case there was any confusion, just in, any confusion i guess whatsoever. i should say i am ken I know, right. <laughs> and i'm just randy oh man <laughs> this week uh, let me tell you this was like on our calendar for those of us especially for those of us who have uh, a person in our family um, that has unique abilities, and we looked at this upcoming weekend, and we were like, "Wow, this is this is going to be pretty cool." Uh, there's going to be some different uh, different pieces and parts playing throughout the throughout the uh, worship service. And let me just say, and as I know, you said you were going to listen to the podcast, and so amazing, amazing, amazing job doing online worship hosting um, in the lobby beforehand, like kicking things off. The million dollar smile. I'm like, you could say, (laughs) and they would still be like, oh, Inez, you did such a great job. Oh, yeah. Because you have the smile and you can't resist that smile. No, definitely Um, not. She had the questions down. She was in the chat with me. She was awesome. Yeah, she uh, was on a roll. Yeah. So she was watching and then she was answering some. um, And so kind of getting a feel for it. So I can totally see a future in the online worship host schedule. Definitely. Um, She better be on there, Randy. I know, right? (laughs) Stan Lee. Well, he doesn't listen. (laughs) Anyway, um, (laughs) and then, you know, Emily had prayer. That's my youngest. And um, even though, like, after first, it's like, I want to do it again because (laughs) people, you know, people, you know, people were like, oh, they were like clapped. And she's like, oh, I like that. That's good. Can I have some more of that? And then there, then you get back to second. It's like, I don't know if I can. And you're like, why? You just said like an hour ago you wanted to do it again. I, don't, I changed my mind. Like, I don't want to do it now. She did it. Though. I understand. She I sometimes feel job. that way about two, 30 seconds before I'm supposed to go up and speak. Go up and speak. And it's delight. You know, it's a little intimidating. All that good stuff. You guys had thoughtful and tough questions. Like it was just like, hey, what are we? Are we going to do like first service? Randy came in and was like, "Hey, when are we going to get rid of that uh, that uh, platform that isn't accessible?" And mm-hmm. someone in the second service kind of had the same kind of question, yeah. but mm-hmm. felt that was fair that we answered those in front of both services because that yep. felt like, "Hey, this is things that we Just, can we know we want to do and we can do and we will do." But yeah, those are totally legitimate, and you know, yeah, we are. we actually have been in the <laughs> in the worship center with our tape measures trying to figure out, okay, we need. You know, One this, inch many, this many for inches him. for this many, for this much. And so it's, it's something that we've really been trying to think about. We've even thought about the possibility of having, you know, lifts. So like, like the elevator right. lifts um, and just trying to, it's, we're so limited in this space. I wish we had more space, but, and also looking at the possibility of doors that are accessible, you know, so you push the button and yep. open the doors. We haven't but, been able to make that happen yet, but those are all things that are on the radar that we're thinking about for the future. Yeah. So that was one. And we had both Inez and I had responded in the, in the chat with some of those things like, yeah, we do realize that there are some things and we, that's what no barriers is about kind mm-hmm. of explaining that to the online family while we were discussing it in, uh, in the message or in the, uh, in the response and things that we can see to try to remove those barriers. And so, um, there was a lot of positive feedback to that as well. And I also thought, you know, as we as we kind of we got through everything and for those of us who had, you know, had to coach the little ones through, it was like, whew, <laughs> at least. Well, I guess that was just me and Heather, but I was like, well, I'm ready for <laughs> I'm ready for some food and just, you know, and there was a. A four string quartet playing for that was beautiful for potluck. For potluck, yeah. they were they were great, and we had. Um, Can I just tell you how impressed I am? I mean, firstly, not to jump away from the first no. string because that was impressive, but how I fast ti- that got I done? timed it. Well, I timed how long it took from when Karen 
grabbed the mic? Said no, not from when she grabbed the mic, but when she basically said, "Okay, let's begin." Oh, oh, gotcha. To when the whole worship center was completely set up, six minutes. Wow, that's amazing. And then That's John crazy. told me that they got John told me they got everybody through from the moment they started serving, um, opened up the line to the last person went through twenty four minutes. That's Some insane. Serious efficiency right there. There was what four tables or were there five? I don't one two three. I think there was five tables. Uh, yeah. Plus then the dessert tables were at the end, and it was and then you it know was very for, efficient for those of us who have picky eat or super picky eaters even worse than what you might think of normally we're like hey is my chance there any fried chicken left <laughs> or, or mashed potatoes like those are go-to's when we go places when there, we know there's not other things and, and um i heard there was pizza too yeah pizza yep. i i saw one piece traveling about in a youngster's <laughs> hand so i I, I know there was pizza. I didn't see any What I pasta. wanted to find out was where it was from because it smelled so good. It smelled really so good. Yeah. Mm. It was it wasn't like it did not look to me like it was like chain like, like Pizza Hut or Papa, Papa John's, John's like or that, something yeah. like that. It looked mm. like it was something like else. Like really good so, pizza. Yeah. Well, everything I had was delicious and yeah. I was uh, and when they announced that there were seconds and the plates coming back in from yeah. the second run was like, oh, yeah. oh, and then there was the thirds and they were hollering, thirds, fourths, come and get them. And people were leaving with <laughs> giant plates of food, taking them yeah. home. And there was still food. Yeah. Wow. So Loved Ken it. having to do anything with the five loaves and two fishes, we knocked that problem out. See, right away. Everybody didn't. Everybody was like, yep, that guy can't do that. So <laughs> let's make sure. Let's bring it was food. funny. I had one of our church members actually, um, who's probably listening to this, but and one of, she's like, I started making food last night and I thought, Ken said to bring enough for my family, but what if other people don't? So I started making more and more and more food because, and now she goes, Ken, I have a whole lot of leftover food here. And I, or I don't know if she said the leftover part, but she basically said, I brought, brought way more fun. and look, and there's so much leftover. And I was like, that, but that's what we want. We'd rather have it leftover. I mean, we can always take it and give it to i mean there's give it to people who who need some food you can do that take it home mm -hmm. grab a plate <sighs> lunch for the rest of the supper. week supper that's all i'm saying i don't i'm i'm a big leftovers but person but no thank you mind. to all of our church members who really um oh yeah I, honestly i've been at churches where you ran out of food and i just hate that to me it's just like the opposite of hospitality mm -hmm. and so i just love the idea that we bring enough food knowing that you know I don't know if you've ever been there, but I remember there's been a couple of times where I just just did not have the energy to bring food to a potluck. I, yeah. It was just a crazy week. I was a member of the church, and I just like, man, I feel guilty, but I, I also want to stay and hang out, see people. And, and see usually people, on that yeah. week when you don't have the energy is the week you'd really like to have a plate <laughs> of food that you didn't have to make for yourself at home or whatever. And um, and so I just love the idea that you know. Bring plenty if you can. If you can't, you stay, and we fi we'll figure it out. But anyway, good job to everybody. Or when you see, when you're going through line, and you're like, "Wow, they just cleaned that bowl out." Yep. <laughs> Oop, there goes. You know, we there. really have to. We have to give a lot of credit to, Oop. to uh, you know, Freud and John and Raleigh, and, and Raleigh, Raleigh. because oh, Carol, there was so much planning that went into this to make it as efficient as yep. it was. You know, we we even had a diagram up on the screen. <laughs> John and Freud <laughs> spent a whole. I, I think they might have spent a whole afternoon just. Literally tape measuring. Yes. And John actually called members of our staff downstairs just to see whether they would fit between chairs comfortably. This close. He was like, tying knots and ropes, and then the ropes yeah. were being used as patterns. And yeah. It was I mean, and honestly, the way it all went out, Karen just like, and, and Karen staying on the mic to just give yep. direction so mm -hmm. nobody lost focus. Yep. And then the way everybody went through line, come in one side, come out the other of 105 through yep. the hallway system was genius. All the food warmers, like that was mm -hmm. genius because usually yep. it's like, where do we put everything? Because mm -hmm. yep. if you go to a smaller one, it's like, well, we've got two ovens. Like just like yep. kitchen right. ovens, right? Like back in the all-purpose area, yep. and that's how Guess we. Potato talk casserole is going to be cold. <laughs> 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 so bring your cold dish to pass because it ain't going to get warm, you know. And so what a what a great way to go through, and then like you said, to have the extra leftover and so many things to choose from. It was uh, delicious. The, and the string was quartet nice. was great. Yeah, uh, the Paradise Family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, taking care of those, doing a great job. And finally, the Aubrey. 
Aubrey. We introduced Aubrey yeah, today right. in church. It's all official. So that uh, our well, I guess it's not official till next week when the uh, Florida conference representatives come in and is that next week they're coming the, here? Yeah. Oh, really? Yep. They're going to come in and officially uh, introduce officially her. Officially official. Yeah. Well, they yes. signed the paycheck, so we'll let them do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. So, and then she's preaching next week. Also. She is. Okay. Yes. Well, because you're not going to be here. I am not. That's why we're doing this today on Saturday. That's it. There you go. All right. Yeah. So, welcome, Aubrey. And if any of y'all, she does have an email. It's A U B R E Y. I'm pretty sure she's met everybody already. Yeah, I, I saw her, uh, like, I went up to a couple of people to say, oh, you need to meet. Oh, yeah, we've already met her. So, yeah. good I job, think she's Aubrey. Making, I think she's, she's making the rounds pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, she, she jumped right in there. So. She's so. definitely uh, going to add to the. Ahead of the, the curve. <laughs> She's just going to increase the percentage of extroverts on our staff. Well, we're going to have to. I, I just have already seen that we're, she's going to be the person when you're like, hey, do you know that person? Yep. They usually mm-hmm. sit here or they usually yep. this. She's like, oh, well, that's going to be so and so. Yep. And I know all about him. And I'll be like, oh, of course you do. So that's that, that will be helpful. Uh, that's Aubrey. She's and then, awesome. Speaking of Aubrey, uh, this morning on our YouTube channel, we had a comment from Tashoy Robinson, who was responding to the 60 ish with Ken. Okay. From yesterday or from Wednesday, sorry. Uh, just basically, she said, "Aubrey's amazing. Nope. We miss her already here in Georgia." Aww. And I'm pretty sure I saw it, it didn't come out that way, but I think I saw drop. yeah the little emoji with the, the teardrop emoji. I'm pretty sure that was at the end of the message. Mm. It didn't come through, but to show I thank you. Uh, we're enjoying her so far, and and, and we, you're also welcome to come down to Whole Life. <laughs> if yeah, like yeah, to yeah, or tune in, whatever you need to do. Yeah, come yeah. and visit. That's cool. That's cool. So, <laughs> and then one final thing is. Uh, you know, um, Mel has been one of our more engaged members yeah, on, on totally, the podcast, yeah. and he sent me an email, or sent us funny. an email that made me chuckle, um, and this was from last week. He said, you know, you learn new things in the podcast. I always thought the reason they did prayer meeting and Pathfinders on the same night was that the only way they could get decent attendance at prayer meeting. <laughs> 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 Touche. I emailed him back and said that that is completely valid theory as well. You can we can go with whatever you want there. Oh man! And so thank you, thank you for the email. Every so often, it's fun to get one that just has to uh, is designed makes to makes your belly laugh. Just makes you laugh on uh, without thinking about it. So, okay, what when you were thinking about today's message? What, did you start out with the story of you know David, Jonathan, Mephibosheth? Mephib- Mephibosheth. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to say I, I didn't get it right probably 50% of the time I said <laughs> well, up front. Cecilia actually said in the in the chat today, is anyone else impressed by the fact that Pastor Ken has said Mephibosheth correctly like 30 times? So <laughs> it, it did not nicely show. Nicely done. Yeah, oh, nicely well, done. So. I was sweating bullets, let me tell you. <laughs> Because <laughs> I like if you could pick something more difficult to say it that to, like nothing in the English language prepares you to say that. I mean, we have to give Ken credit because other pastors would have been thumbing through it. Oh, that's a good story. Nope, not saying that thirty times. <laughs> not doing that one. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. New next story. <laughs> next story. Yeah. So was this what you were thinking the whole time when it came up, or how did this become the story that you landed on? Yeah. Um, you know, just, yeah, I'm trying to think about how this did become the story. I, um, when I was kind of thinking through the different stories of, of people um, in the Bible who had disabilities, um, just kind of thinking through some of those, and we, we do a lot of time, we spend a lot of time on the stories of, of Jesus uh, in the Gospels with people with disabilities, and um, just being me, I... I hate doing what's been done a lot. So I started thinking, well, what are some stories that don't get told as much that might hmm. also play into this? And um, and so I was kind of toying with that story, trying to figure out how I wanted to work it in and how I wanted to, to do this when I was doing research and came across this um, article in a, a scholarly journal that was actually addressing disability and I think in Kenya uh, the hmm. writer was kind of talking about the reasons for um, f- for some of the issues that I-, I assume that she's from Kenya and so she was just kind of addressing these issues and, and one of the big things she was talking about is the religious problems that people have because of the religious beliefs in hmm. Kenya okay. uh, with this and you know in the middle of this article she um, cited another scholar who, had done 
work and had specifically dealt with this this story of Mephibosheth. And so mm. um, as I was reading through, I was like, oh yeah, this is this is really good stuff and I want to go ahead and pull this in. Because I can only think of one other sermon I've ever heard preached with Mephibosheth, forget it. Anyway, with him as the central character, Big M, the Big, yeah, M. The big M. But like as the as the central character that actually worked in like as a central character theme and the issues that he faced and, yeah. and the things that you pointed out. So that's why I was just curious if that was the intent or if it was like, oh wow, didn't think of this, or because you don't really hear this preached. I mean, David and Jonathan, maybe you hear about more than almost maybe any other relationship. If you're talking, you know, friends and, and how to, how to be that friend, have that friendship. And, but when you add this piece to it, it, it just brings in a whole different. I have a laundry list of stories that I don't <laughs> think get told enough in the Bible that I like look for reasons to, to use in to sermons use to see what, you know, where can I plug this one in? Because, you know, they're, they're there for a reason. Um, and I just think it's just kind of one of those really, this particular story is just an odd story to include for no purpose, if, if that makes any sense. It's kind of this almost side ta- tangent. You find the, the story kind of has its origins in Second uh, Samuel chapter 4, and, and it just kind of brushes over in just a few verses the beginning of it, and then you pick it up again in Second Samuel chapter 9, where it kind of, so it's kind of this beginning and then there's a payoff later on where hmm. you're like, you see it begin and you're like, well, why did they even put that in there? And then you get to chapter nine, you're like, oh, because you're going to bring this around and you needed to, okay. And, and so that's kind of, I think one of the really kind of cool things about that story is that it is one of, the, I don't know, I think it's probably one of the the best stories in the entire Bible when it, outside of maybe Jesus and his ministry of healing that addresses, and what I, I particularly liked about that is that whenever we see Jesus healing, he's also curing, right? He's um, he's he's making the lame walk. He's opening the eyes of the blind. He's and what I loved about this particular story was that David did not cure. He did not fix. He didn't make it so Mephibosheth could walk mm-hmm. again. Mm. He didn't. He didn't restore him so he could walk, but he completely as we talked about in the sermon, brought healing to this young man. He completely made this man feel worthwhile, that he had a place. Um, He didn't draw any distinction. And there were so many reasons in the Old Testament why David would not necessarily have to do that. I mean, he could have... We talked about disabling theology, um, the the theology of, well, your sin has brought this upon you. I mean, David could easily have applied that to... You know this this man is cursed of God because of the sins of his grandfather, and God made me king. And you know, <clears throat> David would have been kind just not to kill him, much less bring him into his house. So, what I just love about the whole story is that David brings healing to this young man, even if he doesn't fix his 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 ability to walk. And I think a lot of times. One of the things that may be a little bit uncomfortable for some of us is that we see somebody with a disability and we feel uncomfortable with the disability. We're like, well, we just, we need to, we need to fix this. Mm, We need to get, we need to get this thing fixed. We need to, and, and maybe that's not exactly where God's calling us. Maybe God's calling us um, not to physically open the eyes of the blind, but to heal and bring into community somebody who's blind or somebody who's deaf or somebody who has a hard time walking or somebody who um, has a, uh, you know, a cognitive issue that, that may not be as visible. It's an interesting thing to me. I've got people that I really love a lot in my life um, who have been diagnosed with ADHD. And one of the things that I'll often hear these people being told is, oh, you don't have that. No, that's not that, that's, that's not real. That's yeah. not. And, and if I'm going to be really honest, I was one of those people prior to to these people that I love in my life having that diagnosis. And what I've had to do is educate myself on it. And what I what what I was when I was saying all that, I was not doing it out of a really well educated place. I hadn't spent a lot of time researching and looking through it. 
And, you know, in the case of uh, ADHD, it's one of those things that some you th- you think that if you see a person who's just like you know really a lot of energy and blah, 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 you know that that's a but there's different forms of it that that create attention problems and so a person can be like a really good student but you don't know what they're having to do to be that good student that, yeah. and so a teacher like oh you've got good grades what are you talking about well you don't see that child being up till one o'clock in the morning crying upset because they want to get the good grades, but having a hard time focusing, you don't always see that. So anyway, all that to say, there's the, the disabilities that we see that are kind of obvious. And then there's a lot of them that you just don't, you're not aware of. And sometimes when you're not aware of it, you really can say some things that are kind of crushing to those people because Mm. you don't know how hard they're having to work just to, to <laughs> just to function right just to yeah. to do the things that that a lot of us kind of take more for granted and so just looking at the story of healing with david and mephibosheth to me i just love the fact that, that mephibosheth is not made whole as far as he's not he's not cured he's not a, but david heals him david brings him in and going back to where and circling back way around was that that disabling theology that David could say, oh, no, you're, you know, it's because of the sins of your family. So you deserve what you got. He didn't do that. He doesn't treat him as a charity case. He treats him like a child of his own. Um, and it's just this beautiful picture, I think, of what it means to just be inclusive, to bring people to the table and say, you have a spot here. You're welcome. Yeah. Literally, in this case. And it's not at the kids' table. It's no. at the big table. It's at the big table. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no. And, you know, there's so much you, to that you can dig into here that's so difficult to put into words or help people understand. And that's the part I think that was maybe the most important part. Because I, I love this for all the reasons that you just said that he, you know, David had every, had, and especially in his time and, yeah. and in the place and in the story, he could have done any of those and nobody would have blinked an oh, eyelash no. and it would have been just status quo business as usual. And it's like you said, it's very, very often difficult for people who someone that has this, you know, has so many underlying things that could be going on that we don't know about. And you see someone with great behavior to your, 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 like your child, you're like, wow, they're really in a good, they're in a good place today. Things are going well. And someone will say, oh, well, that's weird because why do they do that? Or why do they do this? That's so rude. Or that's so this, or it seems to be something that it isn't. And you're like all the things that were make letting you have a really good day <laughs> just get stomped on because you're like, man, you don't know what it took to get to church yep. today. You have no idea. Or yeah. you don't know what we went through all week. And today we had a good day. And yeah. and now that's still not good enough. And that's that can be just speaking from this side of it. That can be something that makes you go, OK, church. Yeah, let's let's just let's just stay home. Well, let's just be honest. Like, can we just be honest for a minute? It's easier to stay home than it is to come to church. <laughs> I mean, just that's that's just for the normal person, right? Yeah. Uh, when I say normal, I guess that's probably not the right way that I wanted that to come out. But that's for the person who doesn't have a disability. Um, it's hard. It's hard enough to do that. I mean, when you're you know getting your kids ready and whatever, that's hard enough. But you know, when you have a child that you know has a disability, when you know when we when we hear the story of uh, Jeremy. Um, mm. that, that we saw the video of, um, yeah. I saw his mom after church, um, and was, you know, talking to her, Dr. Nessie Ameno. And, and she said that, that whole life was really one of the first places that she was actually able to bring her entire family to church because it was a safe place to do it. Normally she would maybe come to church with her daughter and dad would have to stay home. Yeah. Um, and, <clears throat> and, and. To me, that's just a shame. I mean, church is supposed to be about community and about being together. And when you have a child who has some special needs that that may not be typical, it's important for us as a church to figure out how to support that and how to, to make it possible for the family to be there. It's important that if your child starts doing behavior 
that feels disruptive, that the church doesn't start glaring mm. and and making a big deal out of things, most people are just doing the best they absolutely they can. And yeah. Anyway. Well, and I, I think some of the behaviors or the or the noise, and that usually seems to be sometimes some of the some of the things. And I. And in, in people that we don't have a diagnosis in, if someone has something quirky, we celebrate it. Like you'll, my favorite laugh in the entire world, hands down bar none is Nathaniel, <laughs> right? <laughs> and when, when Nathaniel laughs, we all laugh with him because you don't have a choice. It's infectious. But as I was thinking about that, then, you know, someone like in the video, when she mentioned that, you know, sometimes he will just kind of shout out or make a loud noise. And it's like, if someone clearly has a diagnosis, then that can be looked upon. It's not celebrated because we don't understand it. We don't know where it comes from. Maybe we don't connect it with anything else. And it just made me stop and just think about even when I look at, you know, look at Emily, there's things I know that she does that other people look at and go, hmm. I don't know what's going on there, but that's a little different. And I'm like, hey, you're not t- tell me something I don't know, <laughs> right? Because you know it's because I don't understand all of the things and why. And you know, the therapists don't understand all of the things and why. Why does she spin like the glue bottles? What is that's it with so the glue? That's so cute. Right? She has like 15 glue bottles that she's that she, she'll entertain that for a long time. <laughs> and and that's something that happens at our house every single day. We used to tell her, do not take out the glue bottles. <laughs> And finally, I was like, fine, play with the glue bottles, but not the water bottles. But then it turned into, well, okay, fine, but not the, the like the nice bottles. Like we need to go like we're our water flasks. <laughs> and now she's just like, okay, well, and I'm just like, forget it. Just let it play with them. <laughs> like, you're not going to stop. And we, and we don't know why. And there's people that'll tell you, well, we think it's because of this or we think right. it's because of that. But to her, each one of those is a person. Mm-hmm. And if you're quiet and it's quiet around her, you will hear conversations that you've heard in our house. You've heard at church. She'll say um, there's times when she's Ken and you can hear her say something. And, well, you have to come to church. Why? I don't want to. <laughs> well, you got to. You got to go. You love Jesus, <laughs> don't you? And, 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 you know, and then it's like. You know more. No more TV this week. What? What did I do? You know what you did. You know. And so she will have this whole. She will play out these scenarios, and so when if someone were just to look in, and because people say that's really weird with the glue, and I'm like, I know, but it's also the way she learns her interpersonal skills, learns how to talk and and communicate yeah. with mm-hmm. people. So it, in some way, and we don't know why, it's an important part about how she learns and she processes the things. And what their meanings are that she runs into every single day. It's how she processes those things out sometimes. And so I, the, the part of this, though, that really, um, you know, the, the part of the message that just kind of brought everything back around was this healing. Because people are like, wait a minute. In the chat, they're like, I think this healing, because I, I said, so use emojis. If raise your hand, if use the hand emoji, if you can cure or, and if you can heal when at the beginning of the message and a couple are like, all right, I think I'm going to have to wait before I do this because I, it, be, like, <laughs> feels it, like a it calls question. me up front to, to... <laughs> even online. They're like, you know, they're like, wait a minute, this without saying it, they're like, this feels like a trap. <laughs> and I don't blame you. You're not unfair to feel that way. I've been known to do things like been that. Known so. to do that. And but if we think about it that way, the healing part is really beautiful Th- that, you know, that David allows him yeah. and brings him into those, you know, into a, when you talked about conflating the disability with the sin and mm-hmm. all those things and virtuous suffering. Oh, the virtuous suffering. Gosh. Yeah, I heard I was, you, you. You actually made a very audible noise. <laughs> Heather oh, looked no. at me. She's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, that was really loud. I didn't mean. And I was just like, that's but but that's the one where we just assume things and we all know how that works out. But you just, when you assume that you know what's happening in, in, in that situation and when you, and so I'm balancing that on one side because everyone was like, man, when Inez in her video said, don't, Never not like don't ever not say hello because I'm in a wheelchair. Yeah. Please mm-hmm. come and say hello. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, that's that's really great. And it it felt like people were feeling like it is okay to just you know go say hello at minimum. Just say hello and treat that person just like yeah. anybody else. And then on the other side, 
Ken's advice was very good. Uh, it's it's okay to ask questions, but you, you know, but or to be or to find out or to assist, but ask. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's okay. And the best way to ask is just no presumptions. Just to, I'm asking: Is it okay if I ask a question, or is it okay if I help, or is it you know in in a in because there's many times when you're trying to wrangle all the things that you know are about to bust loose with your child that has. Mm-hmm unique abilities, unique sensibilities, sense sensory things, and you can see it. And you're just like, man, we are a we are yeah. two seconds away from things just really going Armageddon. south. Armageddon. Exactly. And so yeah, it's always good to check. Just be sure. And if you get a a short answer, it's probably because they're in damage control mode and they're like, I just want I don't because none of us want that to happen in public is <laughs> As least amount as we can, as much as we can corral it, because yeah. you're already uncomfortable because you know you're 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 pushing that and people are noticing it, and then you just don't want to be the person standing there that's like, ah, oh, man, the, like now we have now it's a full blown thing, and then you just it's like you said it, it doesn't even have to be church. It's like, well, I don't even know if I want to go to the mall, yeah, or I don't want to go. I don't want to go out to eat because this is just this is. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's too hard. And so um, I would just say the the grace part of that and the way Ken described it was 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 very, very spot on. Um, It really did. It really did uh, our hearts very, very good. And and I met I I met a new a new guy today, a new person. What's his name? Jacob. Jacob um, has Down syndrome. I got a hello on the flyby and I was like, wow. And I talked to his mom for a while. I'm like. Jacob is yours, right? She's like, yep. And I'm like, he is full of energy. She's like, yep. And we had this great conversation. We talked about different things. And it was also good. And that's where when people ask why, like, you know, why do yeah. why why do we do? Why are we concerned? Why it's a it's a small, it's a smaller community. There's a lot of there's a lot of people in this community and you don't always see them because of all the things we just talked about. But it's really good, too, when we get to see or they get to see, hey, there's someone like me at church. Emily saw saw him go by again and he was he was moving on. I think they were headed to they're probably headed to class. And she was coming downstairs with her her sidekick that kind of helps her out on Saturday mornings, navigate uh, Sabbath school class and different things. And she was like, hi. <laughs> and he was like, boom. And then she said later at lunch, he's like, dad, uh, I met a boy today. I'm like, oh, yeah? Yeah, he's fast. <laughs> and I was like, oh, did mm-hmm. you catch his name? She's like, no, he's fast. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, OK. So. But to her, she met Jacob. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now that at church, there's someone that looks like me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a big deal for her, too, because then that makes her feel like there's a big deal for all of us. Right. That that, that all of us that that would be there. And so from a from a dad watching that and the excitement on her face, even though they (laughs) they get each other in ways that also we don't understand. (laughs) When we go to the Down Syndrome Foundation, we like we had a camp out with like 50 families and you're like. Wow, the range of how that's the other thing. You can't say someone has this or has that and then immediately know what's happening because you think you know about people that have a certain condition. That was 50 families, all with, yeah, some similarities, but also with a lot of different tales to tell. And so that was the other part. I thought just like not seeing everyone, just seeing everyone as a as a, a creation of God. The man, what that was so such an important part of of today's message it was that was that was just so spot on and the idea of it's the charity too Hmm. that's a tough one because while we don't i don't know does anyone like to get charity other than like if it's if you're in a bad spot i mean if you're in a good spot and someone's like hey things are going good and here's two tickets to the super bowl and you're like hey hey that's awesome but if you're not in that spot and you're like Hey, could you use some help? And it's like, mm, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but also the charity, though, um, lots of people have been really, really good to my family. So also I say it, it's so much in the in the way that the charity is presented. Yeah. And when you know someone is just really like, hey, I just would really like to help. Or I'd really like to do this for your family. Um, we've had some 
pretty cool, some pretty cool things happened because someone else was just generous. And that's, that feel, that feels good too. Yeah. I think that there's a difference though, between treating somebody as, um, I think there's a difference between helping somebody because you genuinely have a heart to, to give help and, and, and viewing another person as, mm. as uh, the object of, you know, charity. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I don't want to at all say anything bad about charitable organizations because that's charity is a good thing in this, when it's, done correctly done yeah but when mm-hmm. it becomes less about human beings and more about look at what i'm doing or right. this makes me superior in some way or i'm i start objectifying people and turning them to objects um rather than letting them be the human beings that god created them to be that that's when we have some problems mm. yeah no that's um and and i know that you know, the, we had so many people in the chat today that were hanging out with Inez and I that were just, you know, we love that whole life is a place that, you know, we're having this discussion just like we have discussions with, you know, more mar- mar- other marginalized communities throughout the throughout the year and at different times and whenever it happens to come up and is in the forefront and you know, the things that you talk, you know, restoration of self, self-esteem, restoration of true identity, restoration to society, because you sit at my table, that one hit, that one hit right here that, you know, God, sometimes we, we feel like his parents, so like we're in, like we're in, you know, well, we're in charge, I guess, but you know, that this is the broader picture sometimes gets lost and just having you remind us that, you know, they, they're restored that restoration comes because you're sitting at my table. That's, that was a, that was, that was the perfect, to me, that was the perfect ending for what so many times we get lost in all the busyness and all the craziness and all the therapies and everything that you have to do that goes, that just can drive you crazy. And then, but, oh yeah, we forget about, we kind of lose that perspective sometimes. So I thought that was, um, an amazing way to finish to finish that and someone came up to me after second service about the the graphic that uh <laughs> and I was like oh they were like oh we really love we really love the uh, the graphic that for no barriers <laughs> and I was like well thank you um <laughs> as you Melanie's chuckling cuz I don't know how long, how long did we work on that yesterday a, a very long time <laughs> <laughs> we've been trying to because it's, and I thought it was an encapsulation of everything we talked about today. Trying to find something as a physical or a a visual representation of what yes. no barriers really means. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and and what we're trying to, and you're trying to include. And did we leave anybody out? Oh, we should we should change this, or we should add this, or. And then the first thing my wife said was when she looked at it, I sent her something because she and her, she was has been part of the no barriers team, and um, she's like. There's nobody on there with Down syndrome, and I'm like, I know, but you know, there's. Uh, she's like, you know, it's your family, your family. You're working on this, and you didn't think to put someone. I'm like, well, that wasn't my focus, and it's because it's really like well, trying we did to think of it. Yeah, but, but not, it was like, how how do we how do we bring everything thing. in there? <laughs> that yeah, like all the things that you really could. Yeah, and so the fact that I felt that someone was like, wow, that I think that's a really good representation though like the yellow is for down syndrome right and i was like <laughs> yes 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 it is <laughs> it is it was and i'm like you got it mm-hmm. and of course you know cecilia and the, their team were all in green and then she had the uh she wore the socks and the was telling socks. people yeah. that the yellow is for I think down they were syndrome. all wearing socks yep on the 21st mm-hmm. they knew about it mm-hmm. and i was like so all, all those things just to say that it it, it like Inez, don't let what you don't know or what feels overwhelming, like does, don't let that keep you from being saying hello or from being inclusive to the best of your ability. And if you get it wrong, hopefully on our side, we're grace filled as much as yep. you're, you know, we're apprehensive about you sometimes asking questions just as much as you are about asking the question. So hopefully there's in 99 times out of 100, it's just like, oh, well, that maybe wasn't the right way to say it. 
if you talk to someone else, you might want to use this verbiage or, you know, ways that you can kind of diffuse or, or just, you know, give grace in those. But I was at least happy that what we've spent so much time, you know, hand wringing over to try to make that representation also hit home with at least one person yes, today. Really good. Thank, thank you to that one person. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was, that just, that made, that made me feel like maybe we were on the right track. Um, we had a couple of questions that we didn't get to, and I'm gonna, I'm going to start with our um, I'm going to start with our email because I thought this was great. It said, "Good afternoon. I just left the second ser- second church service at Whole Life as a visitor. I wanted to comment about how much I enjoyed Sabbath school class today. It was engaging, biblical, and thought provoking. So mm. I don't know what class you attended, but." Yay. Yay, that class. Um, And they go on to say, I have been to Whole Life on several occasions, and especially because the focus was on reaching and including those with different abilities, I feel it would go a long way to bring down the volume of the music worship part of the service. Those who wear hearing aids, those with autism and little babies have sensitivities to loud noises. My son would have had difficulty staying in the sanctuary, especially when younger. Thank you for discussing this topic. Lisa from Maine. Hey, Lisa from Maine. So, Lisa from Maine, thank you for that. And I want to say that you are not wrong, but let's elaborate just a little bit there. This afternoon, Emily was at the table and the string quartet. Of course, we were sitting right next to the speakers. We were sitting in the front. And it's it was a bad choice of a place to sit for our family just like it would have probably been for your son, because it was very loud at that point where we have a few hot spots where the speakers like overlap and you're like, wow, that's really loud. Um, of course, I know, and we've talked about this before, and, but in case you've missed it, you know, we do have someone that's monitoring to make sure that we're at safe levels uh, so that there's no damage, of course, or anything like that to hearing, trying to keep those regulated. But we do realize that with the, the audio system currently in the worship center, we do have some of those spots. And Emily was just about to go and get, we have headphones, noise canceling headphones that you can check out when you're here. So if you were here with your son, please catch somebody in the AV booth in the back and we can get you set or at the welcome desk. They will make sure Mm -hmm. that you get a set of those. And then someone else had said, you know what? It's a little bit loud. And they brought the volume down a little bit. And then she's like, oh, that's better. <laughs> I didn't notice that it went down very much, but it was enough for her to feel comfortable. So I thought, well, there you go. So it is something that we're aware of that we have a challenge with um, in the worship center. And also, if you find yourself in one of those spots, like go back and talk to someone by the AV booth and they might be able to find you a better place to sit as well that would be not be in one of those hot zones. Yeah, and I think that it's also important you know, as as was mentioned, there there's a wide variety of of comfort level when mm, it comes yeah. to noise, um, and and for sure for certain people, you know, particularly some people that have um, disabilities in this in this area, you know, loud noise can be very very difficult. Um, and I mean, I've I've been in this church, I've been in a lot of churches, whether it's even in a, a more traditional church that has a loud organ or something like that, where it can be really hard oftentimes for, for children with sensory issues and that sort of thing. So one of the things that we really do uh, make sure we have is those noise canceling headphones uh, for those who need that. Um, there's also overflow rooms that are where you're able to better regulate the, the, the amount of sound that's coming through um, if that works for you. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways we are trying to make sure that we engage with that and create an atmosphere that that, that is conducive for everybody to be together. So, yeah. And someday there's some, there's some really cool technology that will help us uh, remediate <laughs> to take care of this problem in the future. But as 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 one of those, also like the uh, what a kid mentioned, like the the, the uh, platform up front, and you know, there's a list of projects that uh, somehow yeah. will have to get prioritized in the future. Uh, that hopefully something, um, some of those things can be can definitely be helped comparatively to the current technology that we have in that area. So. Anonymous, I thought this was great. They said, I pray daily asking God to help me to see, and they capitalized see, people through his eyes, and it is 
really helped in my journey as, you know, as I've tried to deal with, you know, with people that uh, across abilities. And I was like, that's a, yeah. that's a great way to, if it's like, I don't know what else to do. If that's a great starting place, like just help me see this person through your eyes, that's going to help. And then Jama said, I see healing as a cooperative effort. When we extend the healing ministry, the healed has to accept the healing. One cannot be healed unless that healing is accepted. So there's no healer without the one to be healed accepting it. It's cooperative. Okay. And I'm like, okay, I can see some of that where we're, but also I think that the person can't be, maybe they can't be healed without accepting it. But also I think the, maybe the key part there too is, is that we've offered it in the first place because you can't accept what isn't offered as yeah. well. And so, you know, that's probably that part of that cooperative you're talking about, Jama, that if, you know, I would love it if you would provide something that I need or that's something that would provide me some healing in some area. But also, if I don't know you're offering it to me, it, it's hard to, it's hard to accept it. But um, the fact that someone's extending it, I like the, I like that, that we're taking that initiative. I would rather have somebody reject it than not offer it. <laughs> mm, there you go. There you go. I like that too. That's good. Well, overall, I'm like it, this. So because this is only my second um, sermon on Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth. <laughs> nice. ah, was that pretty close? Yes. You got it right the first time. <laughs> first one, and then I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm just guessing myself that I'm probably got it wrong. Anyway, this is not my favorite Yay. for sure. And so, but I'm like, how other how else now I'm not going to be able to listen to another one. So, but who knows? Maybe I won't hear another one. Cause like you said, it's one of the, what other ones do you have that are like ready to come out of the woodwork because they don't get preached about enough. I think we need a whole series of those. I do too. Like I was just thinking that like, how many do you have? Cause I'm the question like I'm thinking is, do you have three or four that well, we there's be- basically the entire book of judges. <laughs> <laughs> there is that Isaiah, I'm- Ezekiel, mm-hmm. um, both of those have, yeah. Just beyond the prophecy, God has them do some really bizarre things. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeremiah, same thing. Uh, so, yeah, there's there. Then Genesis actually has a lot of hidden stories that we kind of focus on the life of Abraham, Joseph, you know, creation, but yeah. there's a lot of other like very strange stories. Hmm. There's the story of Tamar. I was just going to um, say, they, are we going to have a sermon on Tamar? That, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Tamar. Judah and Tamar. The yeah. other twins. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. okay. I was like, I, I know, so. but I couldn't. Yeah. Because those to me sometimes are the most fun Yeah. because they're ones that we haven't heard before. Now, it's always fun to hear one that you've heard and someone comes up with something so different or a different twist that you're like, ooh, hadn't thought of that. But this... Pretty much everything literally hadn't thought of that just because it's not something that we even I was and I was trying to think of when's the last time I'd even thought about or read read about it. I mean, like you said, it's only just a small yeah. little couple of verses. And if you there's a lot of stories about Elisha and Elijah that I think are really fun that we don't talk about. There's hmm. uh good old Elijah bringing fire down on <laughs> On the guys who've been sent to get him, and the, <laughs> finally the third guy that shows up is like, "Dude, please! I, I totally know you can rice crispy me right here. Please don't do it. Don't do it. Please, I, I, I just have mercy on me. It's a great. Oh. I don't know. Maybe it's not a great. I think it's a great story. So maybe just, we so. could just have the snap crackle pop uh, series. Yeah, we can maybe do that and, <laughs> something, and just see what happens. Like you know, yeah. you never know because something might snap to you, it might crackle to you, it might pop to you so maybe yeah. something odd that but like i think a, i think a series of stories i'm really looking forward to talking about is um the sermon series that i'm going to be doing on the book of daniel that's coming up in mm. i think october november i'm really looking forward to that there's i think the stories are you know the lion's den is pretty well known mm-hmm. the, the statue of gold is pretty well known but i think that sometimes we really skip over some of the really major ideas and themes because we're going so hard and fast after this you know the, you know, the obvious, and there's some other things in there that I think that just are really, really cool. Hmm. So we'll see. Cool. Well, I like that. Hopefully, we. I'm for one. I'm just saying. I'm voting for, like, uh, the you know the series. Oh, we could do a story about the shibboleth, the oddities of the Bible. Yes. Since the, we're uh, talking, the well, shibboleth. You, I mean, you talked about you talked sh- about that. 
briefly. A few I weeks, did? A few a couple months ago. When did I do that? <laughs> I don't remember, but I remember you talking about that. Is it Sibboleth or Shibboleth? I... I, I <laughs> Siri Sorry. trying to answer Siri. a question. Siri's right. like, you guys Siri's, have been talking long enough. Siri just on my iPad right I'll take looking over. at my show notes is like, uh, oddities of the Bible. What story would you like to know about? <laughs> and I'm like, where is this coming Where is this sound coming Move from? Move over, kids. Siri's well, on the case. <laughs> now I see why we have so many people watching online. It's Siri and her, all of her uh, friends that are <laughs> listening in. Stop, Siri. Be quiet. <laughs> now I can't get her to be quiet. I guess we should stop saying her name. That might help. Uh, yeah. And then she's like, oh, and, and now you don't even have to say, hey, Siri. I'm like, I didn't say, hey, Siri. And you opened your mouth. So obviously I don't need to say that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I I had a I thought this message was great. I hope that if you haven't actually seen the message that you would take a moment and, and watch it. There was a lot of a lot of great moments and also three great stories. Mm. Uh, from different people, you get to meet yep. them, find out a little bit about their journey. Yep. Thought then, provoking, all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all, all of them were good. And then a little Celtic music. Yes, it's a good Sabbath. Man, everything it was just brilliant. In honor of St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's Day, Day tomorrow. There you well, go. And so, well, it'll already be passed already by the time done. you go there. And so, <laughs> so but anyway, in yeah. that case, happy belated birthday to Kyla. Then, oh, oh yes, she's a St. Patty's Day baby. Is she? Oh. Yes, it's kind of fun because she was born, uh, huh. her actual, here in, you know, on the East Coast, her birthday was around 10 or 11 this morning. Gotcha. But because she was born on Guam. Uh-huh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. So we, when we told, <laughs> when we told, we called up uh, the family, we're like, yeah, she's a St. Patty's baby. It's like, no, it's not St. Patrick's Day yet. Well, it was it, there. It yeah. was there. Oh, that's. W- so Kyla really milks this though, because she gets, she celebrates her birthday on um, <laughs> on the real time that she was born, on and so that's like ten o'clock, ten a.m. on this whatever the sixteenth, and then she makes us celebrate also on the seventeenth, which is you know her Guam birthday, her, home, her homeland birthday. Yeah, well, she was born in Guam, right? She was. Yeah, so that would. Well, that's kind of never thought about that before. Yeah. Like, hey, if you were born in a different country, when do you celebrate your birthday? When you live in a different country, different time zone, really. Or you double Guam down. is part of the United States. Just birthday bonus. Make sure. Well, sure, but you're still a different time zone. That's true. So, like, I don't know. In my family, we have this thing called birthday bonus, where you try to milk anything you can for a birthday bonus. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, that's maybe that's what that's, that's about. What birthdays have to be good for something. <sighs> I guess I, don't, I haven't found much else they're good for. At least when you're past what the the big ones like you get your driver's mm-hmm. license after that I was like who cares <laughs> yeah I've decided I'm I'm just not gonna have just stop uh, yeah I mean I I'm, Although, I'm not I'm not gonna yeah. not have them that's not the plan oh yeah, yeah you, you don't want to I just don't need to count them anymore that's all I'm saying <laughs> I tell you guys Eric asked me a long time ago whether there was gonna be birthdays in heaven mm. and uh, my wife was horrified at my response <laughs> which was you say so of course not. He was like, well, why not, Dad? I said, because birthdays are just a countdown till when you die. <laughs> oh, man. She was like, wow. that was really dark and unnecessary, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, can't deny the humor. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, and, and, and just, <laughs> That's why just, my children are so scarred. <laughs> and just because, I guess I'm starting to count backwards. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and just because I can. Uh, Siri came up with something for us we may want to look at. Uh, she brought us to a website that is telling is approaching the Bible like a conversation with a good friend, the heart-to-heart Bible study method. So maybe we should in- <laughs> look at that closer. So <laughs> Yeah, um, maybe you want to look closely before we start <laughs> Before we start promoting it. Yeah, I'm not going to recommend it, but I, you know, uh, it's, it's read for Revelation Masterclass. Okay. Right? I mean, like literally, like how can you, it's got to be good. Yeah. Yeah. I so. Mean, Anyway, Maybe. okay. I'm not going to enroll. Them. I don't know. I've been in a lot of Revelation classes that weren't very good. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did the seven churches, and that's I that already was fine. I already feel like I'm more of a Revelation scholar now than I was before. Oh, so. you absolutely are, Randy. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Well, let's see. What's anything else that's just like we need to tell everyone? Like we did the potluck. That's been kind of upcoming. Easter. Easter. Goodness. Yeah. Because Easter's, Easter's in March this year. Yeah. For crying out loud. March. March 30th. So don't miss it. Don't. It's going to yes. be good. We, it's coming up two weeks. 
weeks. Well, our program is coming up two weeks from today. From today, yeah. And then what is it? Four weeks after that is uh, church, church retreat. retreat. Two weeks after that. Yeah, two. So four weeks from now, though. Yeah, yes, it's a month. Out. We're now. a month Woo! out from church retreat. If you want to signed up, you better get yeah. signed up. That's just it. So, uh, and so well, I'll be accepting Red Bull donations between now and then. <laughs> Well, and the good news is we found out that Lineage Roasters uh, deliver to the church oh, now yes, for free. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. All we have to do is, uh, you know, uh, you can hit me up on Venmo and subscribe and all that good stuff. And, you know, come on up. We'll we'll have a good time. Yep. Church retreat. Okay, that's it. Well, this has been a great, this has been a great Sabbath. I'm just, uh, I don't want to go, but we need to go. It's time. We're done. It's over. Nathaniel, I think we got you to work just about the right time. He he counsels me every so often on weeks when he had to wait to catch the rest of us until <laughs> after he leaves. It's all work. just for Nathaniel. <laughs> for Nathaniel. <laughs> but, uh, you know, partially true. Anyway, but guys, thanks so much for listening and have a fantastic week.